Brother Jerry Byram, continue to remember uh, Brother Jerry, if you would, please. And uh, he needs your prayers, and he appreciates so much your prayers. And let's pray for him. Sister Billie Jean Owens, um, we need to continue to pray for her. Also, uh, Sister Linda Titlow, as she is in Dallas, uh, I think for a couple more weeks after this week, she'll be still having treatments and staying in Dallas. And so continue to pray for Linda, Tad, and the family. Uh, we've been praying for Brother Danny Jones and Brother Joel Dillahoney. They've been on our list. They've had both had the COVID-19 along with their families. and so, But they're doing better, and uh, they're improving each week. And so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, Brother Ryan, or Ryan Tomachek, that's Justin's brother, uh, continue to pray for him uh, as he recovers. Also, Ginger Lee, uh, let's continue to remember her. Ginger will be having uh, treatments it's uh, the next eight weeks, but she'll be having treatments every two weeks. So it'll be four treatments in eight weeks. And what they're going to do, she has the uh, esophageal cancer. And so they'll be doing these treatments for eight weeks. And then after that, they'll do a scan to see where they are. If it's shrunk enough, they'll be able to do surgery. If not, there'll be another eight weeks on top of that. So let's pray for her and pray that this first eight weeks will get the job done where she can have uh, the surgery. Also, Michael Owens, continue to remember him and because uh, he still has a lot of pain. And um, I guess apparently they haven't scheduled as of yet any surgery for him. Uh, but I know he's going to need uh, surgery here pretty soon. So pray for Michael. Brian Sample, that's Madison Owens' uncle who had uh, quadruple bypass heart surgery last week. And he's at home now and he's recovering. So let's remember Brian Sample. Uh, a couple that I forgot, failed to mention last week, one of those is Dante Enriquez. That's Brother Aaron Enriquez's brother, little brother. And uh, he has seizures, and uh, he's in Mexico. And so I know he's gone to several doctors there and te having tests run. So pray for Dante Enriquez. And also Lucio, the Lucio Rodriguez family, uh, he was the director of the seminary, our se seminary there in Saltillo, Mexico. He passed away last week. And so be in prayer for the Lucio Rodriguez family. Uh, also, uh, Sharon Moore, that's Brother Ricky's sister, who had a stroke last week and uh, in the hospital. And Tyler, they airlifted her to Tyler. And so continue to pray for her as she recovers. Um, Sharon Moore. Uh, I mentioned last week Yvonne Cobb. She's a resident here at Mount Enterprise. Neighbors with the Fanchers. And a uh, 91-year-old, and she fell and cut her head, and they had to put staples in. Uh, they removed the staples from her, and then they had to suture it because it was not healing. So she's still at home. She's not doing well. So pray for Yvonne Cobbs um, and also Lexi Walker. Uh, that's Brother Dean's daughter, of course, and she has preeclampsia. She's at home, and she's on bed rest, and uh, we need to remember her in your prayer. Pray for Rosalind. I think maybe she's already... Uh, getting there, but it's um, how much longer she's going to be able to take that, I don't know. But pray, pray for Lexi Walker. Um, if you have any other additional prayer requests, make sure you get those to me this week. I'd like to include those uh, during our Wednesday night prayer time. So let's remember each of these, if you would, please. And also, as far as announcements is concerned, two announcements. Uh, one is for our seniors. There's tables back here in the foyer for you. Uh, we've already had one bring their box and put it on the table. And so uh, if you would do that, uh, that way people, as they come and go during the week, they can leave congratulatory cards for you. And um, I'm sure you'll be wanting to receive those. So put your boxes back there on the tables. And uh, that's all already set up for you. And also the next announcement is concerning our, our uh, Sunday services. Uh, we're going to have in-person services Sunday morning, 1030 uh, you should be receiving a letter probably tomorrow, Friday at the latest. Um, and that letter goes over, it's two pages, and it goes over all of our safety precautions and, and guidelines and all of that for meeting together. But anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. And uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it's going to be a great time. It's Mother's Day. And so don't hold it against me if I do not have a Mother's Day sermon for Sunday. But somehow, some way, we'll try to include that in the message. But anyway, sometimes the Lord works that way, y'all, and sometimes he just doesn't. I remember telling the church when I came that I'm not a special occasions preacher. And uh, what that means is, I mean, I try to 
you know, if I know Easter and Christmas and all that's coming, we try to prepare for that. But sometimes it just doesn't work out. So anyway, but it's still going to be Mother's Day, and I'm looking forward to seeing y'all on Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, that's all the announcements uh, and prayer requests that I have tonight. Again, if there's any that you want shared during the week, please make sure you get those to me, and we will do that. So this time we'll go to the Lord in prayer, ask his blessings on the service tonight, and uh, then we'll get into our study. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, tonight we uh, bow before you again. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy in our life. Lord, we're just thankful for your blessings in our life and just the privilege that we have to be able to bow our heads and, and to pray and to approach the throne of grace with boldness and Lord, that you would even hear and answer our prayers. What a privilege that is. And help us not to take that for granted. And tonight, we have many on our hearts that we pray for. Um, we've mentioned several on our list, but Lord, there's, there's even more than that. And, and I pray tonight that uh, in your mercy and your grace that you would uh, just answer each of these according to your will, uh, that you would receive glory from it. And uh, Lord, we have those that are just having treatments and surgery, upcoming surgeries and uh, recovering from surgeries and just all kinds of physical and spiritual and emotional ailments. And um, those that have lost loved ones, we pray for them, pray your comfort upon their life. And Lord, tonight we just pray that you'd be with our country, our nation, our world uh, during this time, and you would just continue to, uh, to bless us and use us as instruments for your service. We pray uh, Lord, for this pandemic that's going around, that you would, uh, if it be your will, Lord, you just put a quick end to this and help us to have some normalcy back to our lives where we can come together and worship and serve. And Lord, we just pray tonight for our president and we pray that you would give him the wisdom, direction that he needs to lead this country. We pray for our leaders of our country. Help them, Lord. Surround them with a godly influence. Just give them, put people in their way that'll show them the way of Christ and the light and uh, they make so many decisions that affect millions of people and I just pray tonight that you would bless them and um, Lord just give them grace and wisdom and so tonight we pray as we open up your word for a few minutes that we would be blessed by it and uh, Lord we'll take it to heart and apply it to our lives where we can be better servants for you we can leave here tonight those of us that are here and be better servants for you and Lord just take it as we even view it in the homes tonight and uh, put it to work in our life and uh, make it practical and applicable to where we are tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, for the past few weeks, we've been going through uh, a, a parable in Mark chapter 4 called the parable of the sower or the parable of the soils, however you would like to term that. And uh, we've been looking specifically at each of the types of soil that the seed has fallen on in this particular story. The reason why I, I chose this particular parable, you'll also find it in Matthew chapter 13, uh, it's one of the few parables that Jesus actually explains. I mean, he, he gives the parable, and then his disciples come to him later, and they ask, what did you mean by this parable? And so he explains the parable. So we're not left to any doubt what each of these things stand for in this particular story because Jesus explains it. Matter of fact, he told his disciples, he said, if you don't understand this one, uh, you're not going to understand any of them. And so he, he explains it to them in a way that they could understand it. And so in that, we, we have uh, a passage of scripture, a parable, a story. Uh, it, it is, it is an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. Uh, it, and so what it does, it, it, it's something that everybody can relate to at this time. They knew about uh, they, they saw it every day. A sower went forth to sow. And, and so you can just kind of picture in your mind this person with a, with a sack strapped on them and have, you know, full of seed, and they're, they're going along and they're sowing the seed on the ground. This is commonplace in Israel. I mean, Palestine, everybody does this. Um, and, and so this was something that they could understand, but it had a strong spiritual meaning, a challenge and a warning. Uh, here in this particular parable. And if you remember, I'm not going to go back and go, go over all these hearts again and read all of these verses because we've been dealing with each one for the past few weeks. But I, I want to bring your attention to this. When you look at the parable of the sower, there's three things you need to be aware of. Uh, you've got the sower, you've got the seed, and you've got the soil. Uh, that's what this particular parable uh, highlights for us. We have the sower. He said a sower went forth to seed. 
And, and, and what is that? Well, the sower is the one who actually sows the seed. Spiritually speaking, the sower is the one who preaches the Word of God. And so uh, he's the one that broadcasts, just like you would see, broadcast the message of the gospel. And uh, the, so that's the sower. And then you have the seed, which Jesus tells us in, in this passage, that the seed is the Word of God. And, and so that's simple enough to understand. You've got someone who is sowing the seed... Uh, physically you can picture that, and spiritually you can picture that. Someone sowing the gospel message, sowing the gospel seed, whether it be preaching, teaching, sharing one-on-one evangelism, whatever. What he's talking about in this parable is that the message of God is going out, and then it falls on what he calls soil, which the soil uh, there in our story represents the different hearts of people, how the seed was received. And one thing we've learned is we've looked at three of these already Not everybody receives the gospel message the same way. Not everybody receives uh, the message uh, of the Lord the same way. Some people reject it. uh, Some people revile it and don't want to have anything to do with it. And, 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 you know, there are some that uh, it seems like at first that they receive it, but then it doesn't grow. There's no root. It perishes. It withers away. And Jesus explains all of these different types of heart. Now, I will tell you this. When you look at the parable of the sower, you will be confronted with your own heart. You can't help it. I mean, your heart is laid out very clearly in the parable of the sower. And, and so he talks about the wayside here. This is a person, uh, this is a heart that, that is hard, that's calloused, and there's no reception of the seed at all. The birds come, take it away. Jesus told it that those birds represent the Satan, how the enemy comes and steals away that which was sown, okay? So you have the wayside here, which is a hard heart. Then you have the stony ground here. Uh, that's a shallow heart. And there's a lot of people today that have shallow hearts, unfortunately. Uh, and, and this is a person who receives the Word of God immediately, the Bible says, with joy. They receive the Word of God, and then it's not long after trial and tribulation, they perish. And, and you know, the sun comes up, there's not much soil, so it looks like it's going to flourish, and then the sun comes up and it just withers it away. Either one of these hearts, the same, there's actually the same result when you look at both of these, and that is no fruit. I mean, the seed might have been sown, but no fruit to it at all. And then last week we talked about the thorny uh, thorny ground here, and and that's basically a divided heart. This is where the uh, the seed looks like it's going to take root and it comes up, but also the the weeds and the thorns take over it and, and just choke it out. And, and it just, there's no fruit. Again, there's no fruit. It yields no fruit. It looks promising at first, but then it's just choked out by the world. And Jesus talked about, and when he explained that, that that's a heart that is choked out by the cares and the concerns of this world. Uh, you know, a lot of people try to live their life. They want one hand on Jesus and another hand on the world. And that's how they live their life. I'll take Jesus on Sunday, but I want to live like the world the rest of the week. Well, the problem with that, with that is that Jesus said you can't do that. Uh, you can't serve God and mammon. You, you, can't, uh, you, you, know, you can't serve money and materialistic things and the cares of the world and also serve Jesus too. It just does not work. Why? Because Jesus said you'll love one and hate the other or you'll hold to the one and despise the other, but you cannot serve them both. And so that's a divided heart. Um, James talks about that, how a, how a divided heart, it, it's an unstable person. It's a person that, uh, you know, when you've got that kind of heart, uh, actually you're living an illusion is, is what you're doing. And, and so you're not doing either one of those any good. And so it's important that when we hear God's word that we receive it and that it bears fruit. Well, that leads us to the last heart here in this particular parable, the good ground. That's what we've been waiting to get to. And uh, notice in verse 8 of Mark chapter 4, Jesus said, and other fell, he's talking about the seed, and other fell on good ground. Now he's, here's what he calls good ground. So if this particular ground is good ground, then what does that make the other three he talked about? Bad ground. I mean, it's not rocket science, right? I mean, it's good and it's bad. And so here's good ground. This is the kind of ground, this is the kind of soil, this is the kind of heart that God expects you to have when the message of God comes to you. Notice what he says. It fell on good ground. And and what, what happened? It said it did yield fruit. There's the key. There's the difference between this ground and the other ground. 
This particular ground, when, when, when the message or when the seed was sown, it did yield fruit. And notice he says it sprang up. And not only did it spring up, but it also increased. In other words, it, you began to see it bearing fruit. You began to see that this thing is profitable. Uh, okay? And then he says, and notice how it did that. He said, some brought fo- uh, forth, some 30, some 60, some 100. And so when we look at the fruit, the amount of the fruit, uh, he says, you know, it, it, it's good ground. Some of it produced 30, some of it produced 60, some of it produced 100, which lets you know that not everybody produces the same fruit or bears the same fruit. Everybody's different. Uh, but still, all, whether it's 30, 60, or 100, it still bears fruit. That it's still evident of the fact that it was received in the soil, in the heart, and now it's bearing fruit. Notice how he explains this in verse 20 of this chapter. He says, and these are they which are sown on good ground. Here's what happens. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, some 100. Notice the progression there. He says they receive the word of God. Not like the wayside, not like the stony ground, and not like the thorny ground. But this is a heart that actually receives. Matter of fact, that word receive can also be translated welcome. That, that's, what, that's what it means to receive the word of God. Right? I, I mean, when you, when you actually receive God's word into your heart, you are welcoming it with open arms. You're welcoming God the word of God into your heart. In fact, James tells us uh, in James chapter, uh, I think it's chapter one, maybe chapter two, I have to go back and look, but I know it's in James. But when he talks about the word of God, he says that we are to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. And and so it talks about the power of the seed, but, but he says we're to receive the engrafted word. In other words, it gets down and it takes root it finds the proper soil where it can germinate and, and, and bear fruit the way that it's supposed to bear fruit. And so, uh, you know, you may be thinking uh, even tonight, well, how do I know in my life if I have received God's Word? That's a good question. How do I know if, if my heart is this good heart, this good ground? How do, I, how do you know when you have really received the Word of God? There's a lot of people that hear the Word of God. But how do you know whether you received it? Well, did you welcome it? Is it alive and well in your life? Does it produce fruit? I I mean, is there something about your life that people can see knowing that that fruit is there, knowing that that seed has been sown? And and so you, you should be able to look at your life and be able to know that you are receiving the Word of God. Because simply like James says, are you doing it? Have you put it to work? In your life. That's why he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. All of that goes together with what Jesus is is telling us right here. Because look at verse 9. He says, He said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. There's the key. If you have spiritual ears to hear, you need to hear. And not only do you need to hear, you need to receive it, you need to welcome it. And that's what the good ground really is. Some of the seed fell onto good ground. Now, what is good ground? Well, if you look physically at this story, talking about a farmer, talking about a person that's sowing seed, and if he sowed seed into good ground, uh, what does that mean versus all the other grounds we've been talking about? What, what is good ground? Well, good ground is ground that has been worked, ground that has been plowed, ground that's been tilled, okay? It's been fertilized. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into getting the ground ready to receive the seed. That's true on a physical level. It's also true on a spiritual level. Uh, You know, you just don't wake up and or be just immediately be confronted with God's word and receive it. I mean, I mean, there's things in your life that you need to cultivate, right? In, In order to be a constant receiver of the word of God and for that word to bear fruit in your life, There's things that you've got to do. You've got to study God's Word. You've got to pray. You've got to be faithful. And and there's just a lot of things. There's a lot of work that goes in to to being a good ground hearer. And and so this is ground that's been prepared. It's been tilled. It's ready to receive the seed when it it falls into it. And so the seed germinated. 
Within the heart of the soil, the plant began to grow. Notice how Jesus said it sprouted. It began to grow, but not only did it begin to grow, uh, when it reached maturity, what did you see? There was fruit. There was fruit there. And what is the whole purpose of the fruit? The whole purpose of the fruit is to honor and glorify the farmer. If you think about it, the, 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 the fruit that's on all the work that's gone into this thing, he's tilled the ground, he's plowed it, he's fertilized it, he's watered it. I mean, he's, he, he, and, there, and there's a process all the way through. And then when you begin to see fruit on the plant, and then finally when it, once it reaches maturity and you see the final result, who gets the glory from that? The one who planted, I mean, the, the farmer, right? Because all the work that went into that. Well, spiritually speaking, when our lives produce fruit and we bear fruit for the honor and glory of the God, who gets the glory for that? God does, not us. We're, hey, we're just doing what he's called us to do. We're just faithful servants, right? I mean, we're just doing, we're receiving his word, putting it to, to work in our life. And so this fruit that we bear is not for us to brag about. Fruit that we bear is not, it's for the honor and the glory of the Lord. That's why the Bible says, you know, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. He, he's the one that receives the honor and the glory in our life. And so spiritually speaking, th this good ground is a picture of a person who tries to have the benefit of the gospel or does have the benefit of the gospel uh, shared with them in their life and they put it to work. They put it to work immediately, and, and they're obeying what, what the Word of God says. And I'm just, I'm just going to be frank with you tonight, just to be really honest with you tonight. Hey, if you'll just do what James says and be a doer of the Word, it's, it's amazing of the fruit that we'll begin to bear in our life. Uh, I, I say produce fruit. Actually, we don't produce fruit. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God produces fruit. We bear the fruit, okay? People can see the fruit in our life. And so if we'll simply be obedient to the Word of God, then we'll, you can't help but bear fruit. I mean, it's, 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 it's a simple thing, but yet it's not uh, in the same light. And so when the seed of the gospel enters this kind of heart, it germinates, it grows up, uh, it bears fruit for the glory of God. And so this heart alone pictures that kind of life that can truly call itself saved. This is a person that can say, I'm saved. And, and, I know, and a lot of people are wondering tonight, I just don't know if I'm saved or not. Well, you ought to know. Amen. If you're saved or not, it's not rocket science. I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not saying that I never struggled with this in my life. Maybe at a young age, you know, I had doubts. But, but when God settled this thing in my heart and in my life, uh, it, it's not about me losing it. It's, the Bible says he keeps you. I mean, he keeps you from falling. It's all in his hands. But some people struggle with that, whether or not they're even saved or not. Well, let me ask you this. Is your life bearing fruit? Good fruit. Good ground for the honor and the glory of the Lord. And if not, there's a problem. There, there, there's a, hey, and the problem's not the sower. The problem is not the seed. The problem is the soil. Has it been welcomed? Has it been received? That's why the Bible says that we are to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith. Know your own selves. Prove your own selves, the Bible says. You ought to know whether or not you're saved and your life is bearing fruit for the glory of the Lord. And so uh, you say, well, how can you say that this person you know, can truly call, it, call himself saved? Well, uh, why is that? Because this is the only soil in our story that produces fruit. I mean, it's, again, it's not rocket science. I mean, the only difference between these types of soil that are mentioned is the, fr is the soil, or was fruit, I mean. And, and so only the seed that fell on the good ground produced fruit or bore fruit. And so when Jesus enters a life through the gospel, he makes his presence known beyond a shadow of a doubt. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature. That's right. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. And so if, if you're saved, you should know it. Uh, you know, he, he'll cause the new believer to begin to bear fruit for the glory of God. And notice in our story, some fruit produced more than others. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Uh, so what does that tell us? 
uh, every child of God produces fruit in their life, but, but some may produce more, you know? I mean, it just depends on that person and their relationship with the Lord. But the bottom line is, is that it bears fruit. What kind of fruit does good soil produce? That's a good question. What kind of fruit? Well, you know, the Bible tells us when you go through the scriptures, we are confronted with certain types of fruit that good ground produces. I'll tell you one of those is good works. What the Bible calls good works. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 10. I love what Paul says. He says that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. That, that is an awesome passage of Scripture. He, he says that, that we're to be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And so what kind of soil bears fruit? This, this you know, what kind of good soil or good ground bears this type of fruit? Good works. Does your, hey, does your life pr uh, produce good works? And when I say good works, I'm, I'm talking about that according to what the scripture calls it, good works. Uh, now we know tonight that we're not saved by good works. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm, I'm not referring to to being saved by good works. The Bible tells us that, that we're, that we're saved not you know, by good works at all. But we are saved unto good works, which God has already before ordained that we should walk in them. That's what the scripture says. And so you're saved unto good works, not by good works. But good works is a, uh, it, is, it lets us, it's an indicator of the kind of soil that's there. Another, 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 uh, fruit that you know produces soil here the good fruit is the righteousness of God you know Philippians 1 11 says being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God there it is he's the one that gets the glory for it unto the glory and the praise of God being filled with the fruits of righteousness and and all you got to do is go to Galatians chapter 5 which the Bible talks about the fruit of the spirit and and my goodness you want to know whether you're saved or not, look at what he says in Galatians chapter 5. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, and then he gives us nine qualities uh, of the fruit of the Spirit. And notice he says fruit of the Spirit, not fruits. He, he's not talking, this fruit of the Spirit, this is what this fruit produces in your life. What does it produce, Brother Brian? Well, it produces joy. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love first. Amen. You got love in your life? <laughs> you got joy Peace, long-suffering, gentleness. I mean, you just keep going. I mean, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Nine qualities of that one fruit. And, and those are to be evident in our life. And, and so, um, you know, a bur also a burden for souls. You know, if you don't have a burden for lost souls, mm, uh, so, something's not right. Remember what Paul said in uh, uh, Romans 10 verse 1? He said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. I mean, he, he had a burden for his own people to be saved. He said, I, I wish myself accursed if it meant that my brethren would come to the salvation. I mean, he, he had such a love for, for people and he had a burden for people. That, that's part of that fruit, uh, good ground, you know. Um, also, praise and thanksgiving. You say, well, what does that have to do with fruit? It has everything to do with fruit. Uh, uh, Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Listen to this. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. Are you a thankful person? Do, do you praise the Lord, even in trying times? Do you praise him? Do you thank him for where you are tonight? You say, well, it's hard to do that in the pandemic. Why? Why? Do, do we not believe that he's in control of it all? Amen. I mean, and if we're here where we are tonight, there's a reason. God moves with purpose. And, and so we, we're to thank him. Hey, beyond whatever the world or anything can throw at us, you've got to under, come to this conclusion. We as God's people are blessed people indeed. Amen. And you know, the, hey, if, it, if the only thing, and I'll say this, and it may sound crazy to you, but if the only thing that the Lord has ever or will ever do for you is to save your soul, that in itself is reason enough to thank him and praise him for all eternity. Now, we know he does more, 
But I, I mean, if that's the only thing he did, that's enough to praise the Lord for. Are you that type of person? Does your heart bear that kind of uh, uh, fruit of praise and thanksgiving? Now, quickly, go back to verse 9. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, I want you to see tonight that that is both a challenge and it's both a warning. He that has ears. To, Jesus said that often in his ministry. Uh, you go to the book of Revelation. Uh, you know, the first couple of chapters that deal with the seven churches of Asia. And at the end of every one of those letters, do you know what he says? He that hath ears to hear. Let him hear. Let him hear. And, and so what we've got to understand, think about this. Right now, right now, the most important thing is that we listen to him. That's what he's saying. He, now, he, he just gave the parable. He gave all the different types of soils. And then he said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Do you understand what he's saying? Do you, you need to be in tune with him. Listen, don't have a hard heart. I mean, a calloused heart. He's already explained that. That's not the kind of hearer you want to be. Uh, don't have a shallow heart. And a shallow heart is nothing more than when he explains it. Is, is, is just basically a person who runs off emotion. It's shallow. There's no depth to them. Don't be that kind of individual. And also don't be a divided heart. Don't let the cares of the world and all these things choke out the seed that, that, that God wants to plant in your life. Don't have a divided heart. He's saying, I want you to hear to what I'm saying. So here's what the Lord's doing. He's challenging us to look at your heart tonight. Th that's what this is about. He, remember I told you at the beginning, you will find your heart in this story. You, you, I mean, you'll be confronted with your heart. And so he's challenging you to look at your heart. Examine your profession of faith. Is it real? Is it shallow? Or is it genuine? Uh, be sure that he called you and saved you. You were convicted of your sins. And you put your faith and your trust in Jesus. That's what he's talking about. Be sure that's happened. Uh, that's the only way, by the way, you can be saved. That's the only way. And because of that, he says, he that has ears, let him hear. Examine your life tonight. See whether or not your life is, is, is bearing spiritual fruit for the glory of God. So it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's also a warning. It's also a warning. The Lord is letting you know tonight that you personally are responsible for what you hear. Think about that for a moment. You are responsible for what you hear. Now, the sower is responsible for what? Sowing. Right? We all have a job to do as God's people. We're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to everybody. I mean, throughout all nations, world without end. We're to go and preach the gospel. But we're to plant the seed. We are, to, if we can, to help water the seed. Do what we can to cultivate, prepare, you know, but I'm telling you, that's as far as we can go. Once the seed has been planted, it's up to you what kind of heart, what kind of response that you're going to. You are responsible for what you hear. So if you choose to be a hard hearted, waysided hearer, guess what? That's your choice. But there's always consequences to our choices. If you choose to be a stony ground or a thorny ground, that's your choice. But there's consequences to your choice. Be a good ground hearer. He's shown us tonight that you need to know your own heart. You need to know it. He's shown you that the, the soil of your life will be judged by the fruit that it bears. The soil of your life will be judged by the fruit that it bears. Remember what Jesus said in John 15? He said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. And he goes on to say, he that abides in me. And that word abideth means remains attached to, just like the vine. It remains attached to, the, to, to, to the, uh, the source. He said, he that abides in me and I in him, watch this, the same bringeth forth much fruit. If you're attached to Christ and if you're abiding in him and his word is abiding in you, guess what the result's going to be? Fruit. And not a little bit. He says much fruit. Much fruit. He says, for without me... You can do nothing. Isn't that good news? For, hey, some people need to hear that tonight. 
Without Jesus, you're nothing. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. Uh, That's what Jesus said. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So the question tonight is, are you producing the kind of fruit that you'd like to see? Well, maybe a bigger question is, are you bearing the fruit that God wants to see in your life? Are you bearing the kind of fruit that's pleasing to the Lord? You say, well, I I don't think so. Well, the good news to that is that you can. God will help you with those needs. All we got to do is is acknowledge it, repent of that, and, and begin bearing fruit, having the right kind of ground that listens to what God's Word says and put it to work in our life. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. And by that, hey, you, you, you get a person that's saved and they're happy for the Lord and they're doing everything God says do. They're just taking it to heart. They're just taking it literal. Whatever, I'm going to do it. I'm going to apply it to my life. That is a person that will never doubt their salvation. Well, you'll never have a problem with doubting. As long as you're busy in the Lord's work, you'll never have a problem in doubting. So don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the world deceive you. It does matter what kind of heart you have. And so we need to have a good heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray tonight. We thank you for showing us in your word that you are concerned with the heart that we have. Help us not only at the point of salvation to receive you, but Lord, help. we pray tonight that you help develop our heart. Your spirit would cultivate. That we take your word seriously. Lord, that we would put it to work in our life. Believe it. Uh, act upon it. And Lord, just bear fruit, not for our benefit, not, but, but for your glory. That's what you tell us. And so, Father, I pray tonight that you'll help us begin to do what you'd have us to do. And uh, it's a serious thing to be a child of God. And there's responsibilities that come along with it. Help us to eagerly, eagerly want to do what you'd have us to do. And Lord, tonight we'll just give you all the glory for it in our life. Help us throughout the remainder of this week. Give us good days in, in, in Jesus and help us to be the example we need to be. And may others see Christ in our life. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.